Okay. You know, there's always something else I should probably be doing, but uh, this seems fun. Let's make a little video about my rank. Okay, some what I what some people on the internet have dubbed the Druid Ranger build, and uh, largely that is a uh, of, of factor of using a ranged weapon while having pets. Basically, you're a summon druid that uses a bow. And it's actually kind of a cool build. I saw a video by a dude named Akis Hersig. I'll link his video in the description below. Uh, but he had like a super expensive, awesome version of this build with Drax, a Reaper's Toll, an Enigma, and um, like an inventory just full of summoning charms. So his was a... Uh, I think he played on, like, Players 5 or something, too. It was just nuts. He's got a wild build. This is the poor man's version. You know? I just kind of wanted to try getting through the game with, you know, a Summon Druid. Because I've never done that before. I never tried it. I always thought Summon Druids probably just, like, sucked. And it actually was more fun than I thought it was going to be. And, like, just because it was different, you know? Just because I'd never done it before. Although, I have to be honest, you're not that good. <laughs> you're really not that good. And, and I actually I haven't even been the game. I've, you know, I've, I've gotten to, to the Throne of Destruction before, and I just got fucked by souls so much. So that this character, definitely more of a Chaos Runner than a, uh, than a Bale Runner so far. Uh, but the Chaos, we can handle pretty well. In fact, you know, everything in Act 5 I was able to handle pretty well, except for... Um, the world's don't keep and and uh, and Bale's throne room. It's, it was pretty tough. Ancients, no problem. Um, I guess I'll go over the skills real quick. We've got uh, as a summon druid, literally every single point into summon. Um, max out, uh, max out heart of Wolverine. That's going to be your most important one, and this is kind of the one skill that you really can't go without because uh, you need this little guy to boost your own attack rating and damage. You know, like, that's kind of... he. That's the center point of the build, is using Heart of Wolverine, because... Uh, so what's fun about this build is that you kind of play, like, a combination of a couple different classes. A uh, little tangent that is, that is relevant. You kind of play, like, a mix of a Paladin, a Necromancer, and an Amazon, in that you're, you're ranged and you've got a bow, you have an aura that is affecting your party, uh, and you have summons. So you just kind of play like a, a really fun mix, and I really like the aesthetic. Like, I've always wanted to play kind of like a party leader paladin type thing. But uh, since I play single player, the only way to do that is by using conversion, and conversion sucks. So having pets and an aura, and using that aura to kind of boost my own damage and, and attack rating is, is pretty fun. It's pretty cool. Um, so, Heart of, Heart of the Wolverine is very necessary. You, I mean, for a normal summon druid, you could go Oak Sage, but if you want to do any sort of relevant damage with your bow, you do need Heart of Wolverine. And I think the damage is just more fun that way. Uh, max out Summon Dire Wolf, max out Summon Grizzly, and then max out Summon Spirit Wolf. I don't know if this is necessary. I did it anyways, just for, for extra tankiness on my summons. And then I just started putting the rest of the points into Carrion Vine and then one into Solar Creeper. Um, you know, I, I did want to start using this as I the build that I've ended up with actually does not have any mana or lifesteal on it. So while I don't often need to use potions, you know, I, I don't really have that much sustain besides the life I get from the Carrion Vine. And I just wanted, to, wanted it to, to survive more. So I put more points into, into it to just increase its life. Um, so that's primarily why I've just been smashing points into Carry and Vine. I know that Akis Hersig uh, put points into Cyclone Armor and then a point into Hurricane to kind of use it as like a pseudo Holy Freeze. Um, you know, with the amount of points that I would be able to put into Cyclone Armor, I, I just didn't think it was worth it. Maybe if I if I did that, if I if I stopped using this and took points out of Spirit Wolf. I could get a high enough Cyclone Armor level that um, I could deal with Souls better. 
But honestly, my gear sucks, so like I'm not surprised I can't deal with souls, but I still am like almost beating the game. And I just kind of thought this one, that was like worthy, you know, noteworthy, enough to make a video. So, uh, strength, just really enough to be able to wear the war traps, that's the highest strength um, item that I've got. 91 base with uh, 4 strength from a charm, gets me to the 95. Uh, enough vitality, well, okay, pretty much, I got, I got up to 800 life a while ago, and then I just started putting points into vitality to increase my damage and attack rating. Because I will say that attack rating is, is kind of a problem. Um, you know, the way I've worked it out, it's actually okay. Uh, but, um, you know, if, if you had different gear, and honestly probably better gear, your attack rating would actually be worse, but you would overall be better and do more damage, and you could mitigate the attack rating difficulties with, with better gear. So, um, you know, the dex is, is just nice. Let me see, anything else? So for a while, by the way, I actually put like a single point. For a while, I was using a much different setup. I was using a Yalal's, and I put like one point into every single shape-shifting skill. Because I, I actually went through the game primarily using the Bereza with a shale in it. And, um, you know, eventually I upped it and, uh, and personalized it, because I thought it was really going to be my weapon. I thought this was going to be the one for me. It turns out it's not. Uh, not yet. Maybe it would be again with better gear. But uh, the Bereza is fast enough that you can actually use Fury or, you know, Maul and Fire Claws with it. So that was actually really fun, where I was kind of shooting from afar, and then I would I would shapeshift and, and go Fury something that I, if I wanted to. So, you know, I, I didn't really conceptualize of this build as being solely ranged. I just wanted it to um, be a summon druid. But, th but then I kind of figured, like, you know, why why try to spec into Fury when I already have a Fury Druid? You know, it just, it didn't really make sense. So even if I used the uh, the Bereza again, I would probably not use Fury. I might spec into Shockwave so that I could, on really tough packs, turn into a bear and just, like, stun my enemies so that my, my minions could kill it. But uh, unlikely that I will do that. Anyways, for the, for the gear... So, like I said, this is the extremely poor man's version of everything. Uh, everything is, is relatively easy to find. Uh, the most difficult thing to find is probably an ethereal kelpie snare. And then you need two pull runes to up the kelpie snare and up the witch wild. Um, and then, you know, two lem runes for your two treacheries. So, the, the way that I built the merc is kind of paramount to the way that I play this particular build. So, uh, the Kelpie Snare is kind of the uh, the central factor there uh, that we had to build around. Tretch, just like an awesome armor. The attack speed, the fade, uh, that's really what you use it for, uh, just to give, give him uh, a good enough attack speed to have good damage. And then I put a Shale in the uh, Kelpie Snare in order to reach like a decent break point again for your attack speed. But the, um, the slows target by 75, along with the damage from it being ethereal, that's really what we're going for. Um, you know, when, uh, when bosses are slowed by 75%, they basically become a piece of cake. Because they can't move, they can't walk, you know, they can't do anything. So this is really useful against every difficult enemy, because as long as... He stabs them, like, twice. All of a sudden, they become slowed into oblivion. And then we're using the Vamp Gaze just for some life steal as well as more GR. You know, since I, I was thought about putting an Omrune in here, but I needed the Shale for, uh, for the attack speed, so Vamp Gaze was just, like, a perfect combo piece. So he's got a ton of DR, he's got life steal, he's got slow on his weapon. He's just... He's just... He's honestly the real hero here, and we're just supporting him. And the way we do that is by using the Witch Wild. So when I got into Hell Mode and started having to deal with um, physical immunes, you know, the Bereza just didn't cut it. And I, I actually have an Eagle Horn that I really wanted to use, but without an Atmas, or without a different way to deal with um, physical immunes, you know, I, I also don't have a Reaper's Toll, um, 
you know, just lying around, so I couldn't put that on him. Um, you, you had to find some way to deal with the physical immunes, and that came in the form of the Witch Wild. Largely, oh, and another thing I tried, by the way, was, um, you know, the the IK, you know, this was still when I was, I was like, playing with shape-shifting, was just having, like, a four-piece set to give me elemental damage. And, uh, just, I decided it was lame, so, you know, you know, fuck, fuck that shit. But, uh, the, the Witch Wild has two really important factors. One is that it has a 2% chance to cast level 5 Amplify Damage on Striking, and that's really nice when it procs, but to be totally honest with you, 2% is, like, really low. Like, super low. So, sometimes it doesn't proc that much. Uh, in which case, actually, the fires magic arrows. And I looked it up, this thing fires like a level 20 magic arrow, so 20% of your physical damage is turned to magic damage. And that actually does a significant amount. No, okay, not significant, but enough that you can take down physical immunes a lot of the time with that if you fire enough. And uh, and I gotta say that this thing, although its damage is like abysmal, um... It has a couple really important things that make it just like a cure-all for this build, and that's the 85% deadly strike, or just the deadly strike based on your character level. So even though it's damage, you know, 100 max damage versus 479 max damage, you know, at least you're doing double damage 85% of the time. You know, it could be worse. Um, also, it gives you resistances, so and that really just helps because you don't have a lot of great ways to get resistances on this build, um, especially pre-fade proc sometimes. So that uh, that really helped me top that off. And then also the two sockets that it comes with, that just helps it be kind of a chameleon. Like you know, whatever I needed, I could put you know runes in to fix that up. Uh, whether it was attack rating, whether it was damage, whether it was speed or knockback. Uh, right now I've got a, a Neff and a Shale for more speed and, and knockback. Um, I went for a 75% um, increased attack speed breakpoint, so I've got a little extra. The Lang of Hands. So uh, Akis Hersig uses uh, Drax. I just didn't really care about using Drax. Um, I wanted the damage from the Lang of Hands. I just felt like I did abysmally small damage without that. So uh, the attack speed was also quite useful. And, uh, you know, I could have used, like, a Nos Coil. with You know, if I didn't use these, I'd have to get 10% attack speed somewhere. I could use a Nos Coil, but then you don't get the uh, the Pierce from the Razor Tail. And I thought that this was just kind of, like, a necessary piece. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk more, more about Pierce, actually, in a little bit. War Traps, just for damage. You could use a Goblin Toe. You could use a, uh, a Gore Riders. Gore Riders might actually be better. You'd, you'd get 100% Deadly Strike along with more Crushing Blow. Or actually, you'd, just, you'd get Crushing Blow since I don't have any. Uh, and Open Wounds. Uh, Tretch, once again, the attack speed. I'm using a three-piece Angelic set just for the attack rating. Um, and when my... Um, the little spirit thing is affecting me. I have about 9k attack rating. Now, if I had, like, a demon limb or, like, some other enchant stick, that would be pretty sweet. I probably wouldn't have as much attack rating issues. Um, but uh, but I don't have that. I just have uh, a couple summoning um, plus to skills on Switch to just summon my bear and my spirit at a, a little bit higher level. And then the last piece is the, uh, the Kira's Guardian. For the Cannot Be Frozen, since I actually don't have a Ravenfrost available for this character either. And a Ravenfrost would actually kind of open up the build, because then I wouldn't need to use this. And this is actually sick. I mean, this gives me so many resistances. I just love it. Uh, along with the, the faster hit recovery, uh, I do have a 56% a breakpoint for faster hit recovery. It's, it's just a good breakpoint. I don't know. Uh, charms are just primarily, like, a little bit of resistance, one skiller, and then some damage charms and some life charms. Um, but let me talk about the stash items a little more. Man, I mean, I can't believe I always just talk for so fucking long about this stuff. But it's it's so fun to just, like, you get to build things in such different ways, and one piece changes everything. If I had a Ravenfrost and an Atmas, you better believe I'm, I'm going to try the Bereza again. 
you know, your attack rating would be in the fucking toilet, but then if you had a demon limb, you'd be fine, probably. Especially with the eth rune in here. Minus 25, 25, 25 target defense. You know, that just, like, is an interesting way to artificially boost your attack rating. Um, so, you know, you got your cannot be frozen. You got a way to proc amplify damage through the Atmas. Uh, you get some more attack rating from the from the demon limb. And then you, you actually get 100% pierce from the Bariza. This thing has 100% pierce. That's so sick. Uh, so you're probably going to be proccing amplified damage, like, a ton. And then you can use a different belt. Like, if you want to use, you know, um, you know, the, the IK belt for stats and, uh, and resistances, because you do have a pretty high strength requirement on the Bariza, like, that's totally reasonable. You want to use, you know, the Nose Coil or something for some slow and attack speed, like, hell yeah, go for it. Or a string of ears, like, do it, you know? Um, so that would, that would pretty much change up the build. Similarly, you know, having, um, you know, uh, an Atmas and a Raven Frost would let me use the Eagle Horn as well, but I would, uh, probably keep the Razor Tail because this thing does not have Pierce. Uh, it does have Ignore Target Defense though, which is super nice, so I wouldn't need to worry about attack rating as much. I will say though that with both of those, uh, my my resistances would be worse, which is why maybe the uh, the Bariza with the IK belt would be kind of an attractive feature. Um, you know, I'd also like to swap this out eventually for, you know, uh, I made a Yalal's with a with an IAS jewel in it. Uh, you know, that would be sick. Um, you just get so many good stats and plus the skills from the Yal Yalal's main. I also found, and this is actually kind of awesome, and I'm bummed I'm not using it now, a two-socket giant skull. I found a one-socket before, and I was like, all right, that's kind of useless, and then a two-socket, like, that was badass. Hell yeah. Um, so I'd probably wear this if I, you know, started using a different weapon, too, or I'd like to, uh, so that um, I had knockback. Because knockback is actually super important to just keeping yourself safe. Uh, which is why I got that Nef rune in here. Um, but uh, I do have a, a spell steal in case I need to crepify or, or teleport. But, um, you know, yeah, there's a lot of shit that I use. But to be honest with you, not a single piece that I'm actually using besides the Kelpie Snare actually has a, a socket in it. I socketed the Yalal's Main. I socketed the Bariza. I had this thing socketed from before. Um, you know, I thought about using a duress for the open wounds, cold damage, and uh, crushing blow, but it just didn't have, uh, it, it just wasn't what I really needed right now. So, anyways, that's kind of the build. I had started a chaos run earlier. Uh, we can just kind of finish that out. But yeah, I mean, like I said, you, you'll really see that uh, you you are basically support to the true hero of Diablo 2, the Act 2 mercenary, who does kind of nutso damage, actually. What's his damage? Over 5k max damage. And, okay, that's with 300 additional um, venom damage from the treachery he's got, but, like, still, that's a lot of damage. I don't know why he's just standing still, but... Um, but so it goes. So, uh, just like with some of my other Fury Druid, uh, or just Druid videos in general, I've kind of mentioned that you just want to use the bear as a, um, like a ritual sacrifice. And that holds true still. You know, you, the way that you want to play this, this character is, um, you attack whatever is the biggest threat to your mercenary, and you summon your bear, uh, right on the biggest threat as well. Um, then, uh, you know, if your mercenary is not in danger and he's just kind of trucking along, you want to start keeping your spirit safe because recasting it is, is pretty annoying all the time. Uh, and you can see that, you know, with the knockback and the attack speed frame that I've reached, you actually, you know, have some decent crowd control and whatnot. You stun these guys relatively frequently when you hit them. And you're hitting them a good amount of the time with, with 9k. Not, no, you know, it's not the perfect amount of attack rating, but it's fine. Uh, here's a lucky time when we get um, 
the amplified damage proc on everything, stuff guard starts going down real fast then. And you can see, you know, the Oblivion Knight that I was shooting, um, you know, it, it doesn't die super quickly, but you do damage to it. So that's, I mean, like, your your damage is not insignificant, especially because you are the one that has the chance to, to cast uh, Amplify Damage. Um, oh no, the bear. Fuck. Okay, there we go. Yeah. You know, would you be better off using just, like, plus to skills stuff constantly? Probably not, actually. You know, you'd be losing a lot of damage potential from your own, uh, just from just from shooting shit over and over again. And a lot of protection potential from, from the knockback. So I'm pretty appreciative of, of the way that this build has worked out. Although, you know, my gear literally sucks. And, uh, and you can make it way, way, way better. And, and it would probably be more fun if it was way better. <laughs> but uh, that's just not in the cards for me right now. I want an Atmas and I want a Raven Frost so bad. And I want to use the Giant Skull and probably the Bereza. Like, that's just... That sounds like a good, a good combo to me. You know, I don't know. You know, maybe I would need a, uh, a Demon Limb 2 to make the attack rating work. Because I think without the Angelics, you know, uh, I would have, like, a thousand attack rating, which would really be nothing. You know, I'd probably have, like, three thousand once my, um, once my spirit was buffing me. And, uh, so, so the Demon Limb would probably help that, help that. You'd probably want to keep the F in the Bariza. Ooh, Flawless Diamond. I also do hate how the how the uh, the druid looks with a uh, with a circlet on. I think he looks so dumb. You know, there's a couple heroes that just look super dumb with circlets on. I'm gonna say that the uh, the Amazon really looks the best with the circlet, probably followed by the necromancer. And the paladin and the uh, and the assassin and the druid, not so hot, not so hot. Yeah, and you can see this this knockback actually really lets you hold a bridge by yourself. You know, so if if all of a sudden you gotta just protect yourself because enemies are, are coming at you from from the back, you know, from they just appeared from wherever, you know, you can hold a small group back, you know, until your your mercenary is done. Oh, I gotta say this too. One other thing that's sick about the magic arrows is that it doesn't actually take arrows to to fire, which is awesome because when I was using the Bariza, I was going back for for bolts fucking constantly. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe I would go back to the Bariza if I got better gear and just get like super annoyed of getting bolts all the time. <laughs> maybe I would end up with the Witch Wild again just because it's so easy to just uh, constantly. Well, is this any good? No. Uh, just constantly. Hold your hold your right click down. Uh, you do need a a might or a mercenary as well. I have a feeling my where why is my mercenary not here? There we go. Oh fuck. Oh no. Oh there we go. Okay we're good. Dude Lord Decease. I'm always scared of him. I used to never be scared of him when I played classic. I feel like he just got way better in um, in LOD, man. I don't know what the deal is. Eh, not that worth it. Yeah, so the Witch Wild, kind of the centerpiece, for sure. It's It's nice to have. Yeah, and I think I said you do need the Might Aura Merc, just so that you do decent damage as well, and, you know, the, the damage of your summons is fine. Um, I'm using Grizzly, by the way. Uh, I used to use Wolves. I thought that they maybe did just, like, a little bit more DPS overall, but the, the survivability of the Grizzly is just too good to pass up. You know, just, like, 
just casting it right in the middle of the hardest group of monsters and just like you know it being okay and you can just cast it again if it's if it's in trouble um you know that's it's just a hard thing to pass up especially since uh your merc is actually the damage dealer <laughs> Get rid of that guy, get rid of this guy. Yeah, you can see, you know, the, you do damage. You do a damage eventually. Yeah, you can do some stuff. You know, we'll keep this guy backed up against the wall. And even though he's immune to physical, that, that magic arrow, that's doing some work there. Yeah, 2%, you can clearly see. <laughs> it fucking sucks to try and, <laughs> try and get the amplify damage proc. I will say, though, you, you deal with specters and other physical immunes surprisingly well for all that. Because you keep knocking them back so that your mercenary only engages one at a time, and then he slows it by 75%. And that happens to every single one, so eventually you just have this like pack of exceptionally slowed, um, slowed specters. And this is where, uh, once again, that 75% slow really comes in handy. Diablo's really not going to pose too much of a threat. Is it kind of slow? Yeah. But it's not that bad. It's faster than my poison necro kills Diablo, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> or just as fast. Uh... So, yeah, let's think about my damage numbers, per se. So, with I have 300 uh, poison damage from the, the, uh, the Venom proc on my treachery. So we're doing, like... Almost 700 to 1,000. And I'm doing double damage almost all the time. So 1,400 to 2,000. That's not that bad, actually. Um, you know, considering this little thing. The Bereza does, I think, about... Uh, what does it do? It's got the same minimum damage. So about 800 to 3,800. So your average damage is, is higher with the Bereza, but... Uh, you know, only by, like, a thousand. <laughs> you know? Which is a lot. It is. It's like a 50% increase in damage. But, like, you're also attacking faster with the Witch Wild. I don't know. Each have their ups and downs. Um, I don't even know if I care to beat the game with this character. I do think I want to I wanna find Neelothak and then... Um, Maybe personalize, like, the giant skull. Like, that would be kind of sick. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the build. That's the build. You know. Hey, it was something new. It was something I was down for. I don't think I used a potion that time. Yeah, I mean, like, the vine is pretty good for, for my life. It really is. You just gotta run away when things start getting hairy and shoot from a distance. So, um, alright. Catch you on the flip side.